fam. Welcome to the Soul Detox Come on, Show, man. <laughs> where we are talking about faith. Faith. Fam, so we talk about our faith all the time. We use yeah. the term faith all the time. We are people of faith. We are to walk by faith and yeah. not by sight. But I truly believe we underestimate the power Hmm. The transformational nature and dynamic of faith. Yeah. Faith, God has spent plenty of time trying to help us to see faith, to access faith in ways that will allow us to really be in touch with him. I truly believe that faith, faith is the portal that allows us to access what God sees now. Imagine. No, 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 say it again. No, say it again. Faith is like the portal that allows us to access what God sees now. You know, you know what a portal is. You know, on the cartoons, those portals are created. You're in one dimension, and the portal is an opening into another dimension. It's two different realities that exist. Faith <sighs> is the portal is the catalyst that creates an access point between where we are and what God sees and what we have and what God knows. Like, it's everything, bro. I think you, you cannot... That's why it says we're saved by faith. Saved by grace through faith. We're saved by grace through faith. It has to be through faith because faith is a portal. It has to be through faith. The thing about faith is if we cannot truly or if we don't understand that we're we're saved by faith, then we can't have access to salvation because salvation itself is so beyond, it's so otherworldly. It's us seated in heavenly places. It's us literally dressed in the righteousness of God. Oh, my God. That's not what the homies see. <laughs> That's not what my friends saw. Yeah. This is exactly what God has d displayed. This is what, what angels rejoice when, when. When one gives their soul, the angels rejoice yeah. because they see something that we don't see. I, I believe that faith gives us the access to make tangible, to make manifest manifest, to experience, to undergo, to walk under, to be consumed with what God sees. I want to be consumed with what God sees. I want to be aligned with what God sees, and that's faith. The toxic narrative is that faith has become the cliche. It's been what we brand on our t-shirts. It's what we put in our hashtags. Wow. But it's not something that we walk out. It's the portal. Come on. That allows us to access what God sees now, because mm. to that point, man, it's the 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 disconnect in our ability to believe is because we can't see what he said. <sighs> so if you can't see what someone has said, then the only thing I can rely on is my trust in who said it. Ah, uh, <laughs> here we go. If you tell me that. Outside this door, Come on. there is a wild animal. Mm -hmm. And I know that you just came from outside. Yes. I may not be able to see it, but I can yes. trust you because you've been there already. <laughs> and God is the omnipresent God, meaning always present. He is always in our past, always in our present, and always in our future. So when he talks to me about my future, I can trust him because he's been there already. He's he's in the place now. You're going back to the portal, bro. When you was talking about the portal, being able to access it, it was trivial, but what came to me is the cartoons I used to watch on yes. Saturday mornings yes, where sir. Bugs Bunny was being chased and he would come to this brick wall and he would paint what appears to be a tunnel. Man. He would draw it and it would look good. And then he would put the lines in and he himself would enter the this tunnel. Oh my. But then the person who was chasing him would run into the wall. Ah. Uh. Because even though 
Bugs knew that this wall was in front of him. He saw an opportunity to go through what was in front of him, but the person who was chasing him couldn't see it from that vantage point. Um, so even though they, it looked like a portal, because he didn't have the necessary tools or the connection come on, with the drawing of it, he ran into the brick, brick wall. Was it Elma Fudd? How, how, think, you, how you bring the Holy Ghost into to Bugs Bunny like that? It just came to me. I saw the visual. <laughs> because some of us, I think we keep running into the wall oh, man. because we're not connected wow. enough mm. to the person who's actually writing the story. Mm. We're not connected to the person who has the paintbrush. Come on. That, that because I'm so far behind God mm. and I'm not connected to him in a way where I'm intimately walking with him uh, in, in step with him, that I keep running into these walls Jesus. because I'm I'm getting there after he gets there and 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 he's it's it's this barrier where now between him, I'm trying to. You know the song, I'm chasing after yeah, you. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm yeah. chasing. I'm trying to get to you. But the barrier that's between us is everything that I see tangible. <laughs> so I can't even get access to what God sees now because I keep operating from a place of my feelings versus a place of my faith. Ah, oh, man, you're saying connectivity, man. <laughs> yes. And access. And I think somehow, some way, we believe that faith is disconnected from the personhood of God. I think if Talk we that. realize that the access is not just to the things, uh, it's a, you talked about a vantage point. God is saying through the portal, come on up here. Yes. The thing about it is, it's something about an aerial view, bro. Come on. The aerial views are different, man, because yeah. when you see in regular horizontal plane, you can only see but so far. But with the aerial view, yeah. you can see so much far past what's in front of you. And this is why the scripture tells us to walk by faith and not by sight, yeah. because sight for us is this limited vantage point that only is able to see from our conditions, yeah. from what we feel, and from what we've known. It has to be from what we've known, right? Because we're not omniscient. Because we cannot, we don't have the vantage point to see into the future, we have to tap in to not just what God sees, but oh. to God himself. Yes. See, when I get closer to God, by default, I go up. <laughs> because the portal is a portal upwards. It allows me to get a different vantage point of my position. This is why I'm able. We, I believe that the portal of faith gives us access to joy and peace. Yeah. yeah. Because if I'm seeing it the way God sees it, yeah. my, I start to feel the way that God feels. Yeah. And the stuff that used to crush me down there, for me, at this level, at this vantage point, it just rolls off my shoulder. The things that would have caused me to be suicidal yeah. in this vantage point, from this vantage point, <laughs> it just doesn't crush me anymore. The reason I have access to joy is because of my positioning to God. It has nothing to do what I with what I have in my hands. It has nothing to do with what you can see with your naked eye from your vantage point. God has called me upwards. Yeah. And so now I'm not seeing what you see. Yeah. I get it, right? Right. I get it. You're saying my house is not big enough. I need a different car. I get it. You're saying my kids need to be in a different <laughs> school. I get it. You're saying I don't have enough followers. I don't have the, a network. I don't have any of those things. But I'm sitting in heavenly places. Ugh. I see different. And when you see different, you feel different. Yeah. And when I see different, I walk different. Yeah. And when I see different, I talk different. Ah. It just, bro, it's just it's different. <laughs> it's we different. different. <laughs> and the crazy part about it is because when you say it's the sea, I'm, I'm seated in heavenly places. So I know that if I'm alive, that I'm seated from a spiritual vantage point. So my 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 vantage point in connection and proximity when I'm going up, I'm going up from a spiritual lens, even if physically it appears like I'm going down. So so imagine if we're going up a hill and we get to the top of the hill, and then it's like, okay, this is the moment that I feel like the dream is going to come to pass. 
And then physically, I start to go downward. <gasps> if I'm connected to God, then spiritually, I start to ascend and I can look at my downward uh, dive from the perspective of knowing, okay, I may go down for a second, but I'm only going down to gain traction and momentum because this mountain that's about to come up over here. So then what happens is my valleys now become a place that I covet because I know in the valley, I'm just gaining momentum for the bigger mountain. How many of us have died and lost heart in the valley because we were unaware of his vantage point? Oh Oh my gosh, I was just helping you build momentum. Jesus. I was just helping you get traction and speed and momentum. But because I wasn't connected to him, I didn't have access to the portal to see what he sees. Ah, Jesus. Because we want God to now meet us at our point of need, our vantage point. We want God to come down to where we see things. Wow. It's the disciples in the boat, bro. Oh, my. Don't you don't you see that we're about to drown? Huh? Don't you don't see? Don't you see this stuff? Do you not care that we are about to drown? What are they saying to Jesus? Join me in my perspective. Because from my perspective, this storm is about to destroy us. Don't you see that? Don't you care about that? No, I don't, because I don't see what you see. The reason I can sleep in a storm is because my vantage point is different. And instead of joining Jesus in his vantage point, we want him to wake up and join us in ours. We want him to come down from his heavenly throne and sit with us and just hold us and join us in our perspective to say, I know, I know, I I know that that hurts. I get it. I, I, I totally understand. But we talked about this uh, some time ago, bro. If if I'm already in your future and I know that this is just for a moment, I have a lot less sympathy for where you are right now. If I know that in three days, this is going to turn completely around, I am I have a shorter attention span or a shorter span to a to experience the crying and the sobbing and the all of the negative feelings i have my 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 capacity oh to my be gosh. able to coddle you is now shortened because i know where we're about to go Jesus. see when you have a vantage point of where you're about to go you spend less time on crying about what happened and more time about celebrating what's about to happen <laughs> this is how you can know if you're being shaped by your past or your future jesus this is how you can know if If you are in a space where your faith is now being challenged or cultivated by your experiences or by the one you have experienced with, Uh. (laughs) are we in the space where we're saying, okay, I'm being saved by the one I'm connected to, not what I just came out of. Oh my God. Because if I let my trauma shape me, then every time I go to God, I'm going to be talking about what happened. Oh my God. Gosh, if I can tell by my prayers mm. what's shaping me, I can listen to the prayers and tell what's shaping you wow. by what you are consistently talking to God about. I can see where your faith is by what you consistently talk to God about. If all of my prayers are God, I need, I need, I need, I need, I'm hurting, I'm hurting then that has shown me that I am not in a place where I'm connected to know that everything that I desire is is rooted in who you are and you will will withhold no good thing from those who walk upright before you. When I know the truth, I can stand on it. You just said something. You will withhold no good thing from the... This is where the enemy fights us. Y'all, pay attention to what yeah. this man is saying. No, come because on. even from the beginning in the garden, the serpent, this is the way he attacked them. Yeah. Did God really say you shouldn't eat of that tree? Did God really say? And so he planted 
this idea based on allowing her to engage Eve to engage in a conversation that caused Eve's theology to be shifted. Oh. And so now this God that supplies needs, this God that loves us now can be questioned. Mm. And so his goodness is uncertain. And uh. if God's goodness is uncertain, then by default, I have to take matters into my own hands. Sin um. is not just what we do. Sin is an expression of our current theology. <laughs> our current <laughs> theology that says, God can't, so I must. Oh my God. I almost pushed it, you is that not, in the side of the that face. Is that not what doubt does? It opens the door by causing... Jesus, when he was tempted, Satan tempted Jesus, and now he wanted his hunger to inform his theology. <sighs> but Jesus then refuted it by not trying to create some words. I always say, man, if I was Jesus as a Nigerian man, I would have said some radical new words. <laughs> I would have said, yeah, this combobulated. I would have said something crazy. They would have yeah. had it. Uh, man, that was some legendary words yeah. Jesus said. Jesus reiterated the written word, yeah. the truth that already existed. And he already said, it gives us the blueprint and the theology has already been set in stone. And all he did was he refuted by establishing and affirming the theology of truth, which says, God, yes. God is, God can. Oh my God, God is, Come on. God can. And when we, so was, if Jesus out of his power mm -hmm. turned the bread uh, turned the stone into bread and ate it. Would Jesus have said no? But at the suggestion of the enemy, oh. to indulge, to indulge in anything at the suggestion of tainted theology. Yeah. That allows me to diminish the power and the goodness of God. This is why we compromise. Yeah. Because if God didn't open the door, then I must break open another. Or build if, my own. If God doesn't make a way. <sighs> But see, now you're, now you're talking more from a relational lens because, which is so key, which yes, is so vital, it's so pivotal, because we want God to make not a way, we want God to make our way. Oh, Jesus. So if God doesn't make my way, my God, then I must create my way. Because what if God's way is the closed door? Uh-oh. What if God's way is the breakup? Come on. What if God's way is them letting you go off of that job because he's been trying to get you to start your own business for the past three years? What if it is God's way? Oh, my God. What if his way is off the beaten path? The difficult journey. So we keep going to God and we say, God, God, make a way. And in all actuality, we're praying with a, a leading suggestion to say, God, make a way this way. God, I need this by this day. What? This is this is how I, God, do this specific thing. Mm. And then God is saying, okay, I, I hear your cry. I, he I hear your prayer. But have you even stopped to ask me? <laughs> Ooh, not just what I want for you, but what's best for you? Oh, my. Because the Bible says we don't get what we ask for because when we're praying, we're praying amiss. Uh. And so much of our faith is tied to prayers that are amiss. Yes, sir. So we're not having breaches in our faith. We're having breaches in our preconceived notions. Oh, my. So we keep going to God and we come back disappointed because he didn't answer the way we wanted him to answer. But the baseline of faith is knowing that he is. The Bible says it is without faith, it is impossible to please him. But he that comes to God must first believe that he is. is. Ah. And then that he is a, a rewarder, rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the first baseline in faith is in knowing who he is. My God. Because once I have an awareness Come on. of who God is, I approach different. Bro, <laughs> that he is. And in scripture, man, we see Jesus. He said, 
there are places that he went to, but because there was a lack of faith, yeah. he did not do any healing or miracles there. I remember when the, the picture of Jesus going to heal the young girl that they claimed was dead, mm. but he said she was just asleep. Oh. When he declared that, people began to laugh, laugh on the scorn. Ha, ah, could she just be asleep? We checked her pulse. The <laughs> doctor's here. Are you a fool? Can't you see she's dead? <laughs> you know what he did? He moved everyone out of the room who wasn't aligned with what he saw. Y'all gotta go. Here's the thing. You might have been moved out of the room. Oh, uh, I gotta go now. I'm out. Go ahead. We're like, God, we don't see you move. You don't believe that I am. Oh. Uh, you got it. Oh, you, you thought you was exempt because you was cute and because you go to church? Get out of the room. You out the room. I'm trying to move here. I'm trying to do miracles here. And in the greater world of our faith, we're seeing so much happen. But in our lives, we're not seeing God move. Get out of the room. Could it be that you're outside of the room? <sighs> That God himself <laughs> is limited by your capacity to believe him. That he is saying, I have the power. <laughs> it's not even enough that I'm here. Because when he showed up, all they did was talk to the Savior mm. about their situation. Jesus. All they did was talk about mm. their situation, not even realizing that my situation cannot stand up against the power Come of my on. Savior. So this is the question. My question now is, if you're not seeing what you're asking for, one, have we first started to access the understanding of who he is? Come on. Then now, am I not seeing something happen in my life because my unbelief has caused me to be pushed out of the room? And so the lack of miracles is not simply because we, we just are not seeing miracles because we're in a wrong dispensation. The Lord says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Yeah. That portal that we're talking about is a two-way exchange. When you come here, I come there to intervene. Like I'm calling you up so I can begin to work and intervene. But we stay in the way with our condition, with our reality. Oh, our reality, bro. No. Oh, bro. Our reality is that you think it's the devil. You think it's demons that's stopping you. Mm -mm. Your consumption and trust in what you can see and your reality is your number one hindrance. Yeah. You're keeping you from God. Yes. You're keeping you from what God wants you to see. And it's really, really important to get this because at this moment, this is such a tragedy. Yeah. There is something that God sees about your life mm. that you can't access. Imagine faith being like this glass. Yeah. But for us, there is a veil over that glass. Once we step into belief, it begins to open. Once yeah. we draw near, that glass becomes something that we can penetrate and we can access. God is inviting us in, not just to see, but to access everything that he sees. If we dare, dare ourselves, I always talk about the, the, the delusion, yeah. to forsake our current reality. Hmm. I get it. I, I heard the diagnosis. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I heard your experience and the statistics. Oh, they're daunting. Oh, yeah. Man, yeah. I, I definitely seen everything that everyone else went through. I heard what you thought. I heard what they said. I heard what the enemy is doing, and I see what the enemy is doing. But if you would, for a moment, dare to believe that I am yeah. the God that answers by fire, I am 
the God that created the heavens and the earth. I am the God that parted the Red Sea. I am the God that, that caused the dry bones to come to life. I am the God that raised the dead, that caused the blind to see. Yeah. If you would dare to believe me, I will grant you access to where I am that gives me the freedom to be able to flow in your space freely. We're literally restricting God. We're like, no, God, don't move. No, God, don't touch it. No, God, don't heal it. Reality is speaking. Shh, God. Shh, preacher. Shh. Will and Ezekiel, reality is speaking. Don't, don't, don't you hear that? He said cancer. Wait, wait, don't, don't, don't you hear that it was a, it was a layoff. Don't you, don't you hear that is dead? This, this marriage is dead. Oh don't, my gosh. Don't, don't you hear the reality of my situation? My God. And he's saying, bro, if you come up here, Jesus. I'll go down there. The brother that came to our event, um, we need to love. They were doing court proceedings. Oh, they had lawyers, court Attorneys. date. They were headed they to sign the papers. They seen each other in months. <sighs> it was as good as Lazarus tomb clothes. Yeah. They watched a clip and God spoke to them to the, through a clip that me and you were doing. And God caused a miracle in the midst. Yeah. And God changed Everything from the, I mean, if you were to take reality, to be honest, if you were pre to present that reali reality to every rational and logical person, yeah, they'd be like, man, go ahead, man. Yeah. It's, time's up. Yeah. But God is the type of God that will confront your reality mm. with his word, with his presence, <laughs> with his truth. And he makes reality bow. Mm. He makes reality bow. My brother here stood in the face of a life-threatening illness. Brain surgery, y'all. Could not move his hands, his fingers, could not button his shirt. In the midst of his reality, yeah. God stood and he was God. Some people say, God is so good. I say, God is so God. Good ain't enough. Good ain't enough. Good ain't enough because when he stands, and he intimidates reality with his presence. Hmm. It's a different story. I was paralyzed at the age of seven. God told me to take my son home. They said, sign the waivers, because if you take him home, then he could likely die. Hmm. They said, ma'am, you might not know the type of diagnosis your son has. And at this age, he cannot recover unless he's in our care. My mom says he's in the care of God. She took oh. me home that night. I walked for the first time in weeks. Oh, my God. God, God saying, give me a, God is, it's almost like a double dutch, like, yeah. like tap me in, like outside the ring. God is saying, tap me in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm a, I was an avid uh, wrestling fan, bro, oh, bro. And I see it when, <laughs> when, you know, when they're reaching for their partner and, uh, <laughs> and they're trying to stretch. And it's like, if you just get to the place if you just keep coming, because the rules are, mm. the rules are that the person outside the ring can't, can't. come in until they're tagged. <gasps> so I could be stretched <laughs> out, hung high, oh. stretched wide. My God. Waiting for you to tag me. But if you don't make it over here, I can't come in. Oh my God. And you could be kicking and screaming in the middle of the ring. And he's saying, I can't do nothing when you are there. I need you to get here. Ah. Because once you get here and tag me in, you give me the access. Come on. Now to come in and fight the battles. You know, I was doing some study, man, about uh, Moses and the children of Israel. And I saw from a, a different vantage point the story where uh, they got to the Red Sea. And the, the children of Israel began to murmur. Mm. And Israel said, you know, stand still. Everybody calm down. The yeah. enemy that you see this day, you, you will know, see no feet. more. Yeah. The next verse, God says, why are you crying out to me? Why, why are you crying out to me? Stretch out your hand. 
lift up your rod and do the thing that I've called you to do because what happens is faith is activated in collaboration. Theologians say, uh, theologians say that in that verse, it's not talking from a standpoint of not, uh, don't, don't talk to me. I didn't want to talk to you, but it's more from a standpoint of urgency. Come on. You, this isn't a time to pray. This is a time to step in fully and act. Come on. And so much of our faith is lying dormant because we refuse to do the thing that God has called us to do. That's good. Because it doesn't look like what we asked for. 